and welcome back to Crazy Grandfad Science with me, Crazy Grandfad. We're going to finish looking at water with a bit of a bang! In the first two episodes we've looked at the physics of water, how it behaves under the influence of temperature and pressure. This time we're going to look at the chemistry of water. Do you know what chemistry is? It's basically like the cookery book of the world. Everything is made of stuff. You, me, the chair or sofa you might be sitting in, even the air that you're breathing in. And that stuff is called the elements. Do you like helping to do baking? If you do, well, you know that in order to make the cake, what you've got to do is get the eggs and the butter out of the fridge, and you've got to get the flour and the sugar out of the cupboard, and then you mix them all together to make the batter. Well, that's a little bit like chemistry, except all of the things that you get out of the cupboard or the fridge are the elements. And if you mix them all together, then you make things, everything around you. Even you're a cake made up of different elements. Think of this a different way. Here's a whole load of different bits of Lego, different shapes and different colours. And I can put those together, can't I, to make lots and lots and lots of different types of models. I could use them to make a truck. Mm. I could use them to make a digger. Mm. I could even use them to make an Imperial Walker. Imperial Walkers are into the base. <laughs> Those models were all different, weren't they? But they've all been put together from all these different bits of Lego plugged together in different orders. And that's a bit like chemistry. Everything in the world is made from the elements and there are enough of them that if you plug them together in different orders, they create everything you see around you. So this picture is of something called the periodic table and it lists out all of those elements, the different types of Lego bricks, if you like, that have so far been found. And there's lots of names on here which you'll know. For example, here's iron, and here's silver, and here's gold. And I said earlier that me and you are made up of these elements as well. And if you've been eating a nice, healthy, balanced diet, eat up your broccoli, Alice Windsor, then your body will be made up of around about 60% of carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus, plus a number of other elements which you also need in tiny little amounts just to help your body run like a machine. So 60% of your body weight is made up of those elements. What's the other 40% made up of, you might ask? Let me give you a clue. So water makes up this much of me, and you as well. So where is water on this periodic table? Well, the answer is it's not there because water is not an element. It's actually made up of two elements, these two, hydrogen and oxygen. Both of these are gases. Just think of that when you're washing your hands under the tap. That water is actually made up of two gases that you can't even see. You say grandfather's crazy, science is just crazy sometimes. So you can see from the periodic table that the symbol for hydrogen is the letter H and the symbol for oxygen is the letter O. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that these Duplo blocks are the elements, the atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. So you see I've put a little O onto the red one, so that is an atom of oxygen. And I've put a little H onto these yellow ones, so the yellow blocks are the atoms of hydrogen. And water is made up of two lots of hydrogen and one lot of oxygen. And they fix together a bit like that. So you see there's two H's and one O. And that's why people often refer to water as H2O, because it's made up of two lots of hydrogen and one lot of oxygen. 
So what we're going to do in this experiment is we're going to try and pull the water apart into their separate gases again of oxygen and hydrogen. And they're really not going to want to do that because as water they're in a very stable state. They're very nice and cuddly and cosy all glued together like this and they're not going to want to be pulled apart. No, no, pull me apart! So in order to split them up we're going to have to supply some energy to make it happen. This is what's called an endothermic reaction. Lots of big words in chemistry. And the energy I'm going to use in this experiment to split them apart is going to be electricity. So let's have a look and see what we do. So for this experiment, what I've got is a bowl of water. And I've got two bits of tin, which I've cut from a tin can. And I've also got a battery to supply the electricity. Now, if you're going to do this at home, you can do this at home, but make sure you only use a little battery like this because electricity and water don't mix very well and they can be dangerous. So uh, you can do this, but you need to uh, be careful not to cut your hands when you get your bits of tin and you need to be careful with electricity. And what I've got are two leads here. So I'm going to connect here my black lead to the minus terminal and I'm going to connect my plus lead to the plus uh, red lead to the plus terminal and then I'm going to attach my cables to these bits of tin like that. What that is going to do is going to pass the electricity into these bits of tin so that this one, this piece of tin here is positively charged and this piece of tin here is negatively charged. So let's write that on here. So we'll write a little minus or negative there. And we'll write a little positive onto that one. And why this is important is because, remember our water molecule here, the hydrogen is positively charged. So we'll put a little plus on there and a little plus on there and the oxygen is negatively charged so we'll put a minus on there so when we put these into the water what this is going to do is it's going to supply the electrical energy into the water and it's going to split these apart they don't want to be split apart remember but they will be because the minus is going to be attracted to the positive over here the plus and the plus hydrogens are going to be attracted over to the minus. So what will happen is this will split up the water and it will send the oxygen over to here and it will send the hydrogen over to here. So what we should see is little bubbles of oxygen on the plus over here and little bubbles of hydrogen on the minus over here. Should we see if it works? I've got my positive plate here my negative plate here, I'm going to put them in the water, let's see what happens. Let's give it a minute for it to get started. And can you see that? If I give this a little shake, can you see it's all little tiny tiny bubbles on the negative one in particular. Can you see it's sort of misty bubbles? Those are tiny, tiny bubbles of hydrogen coming off. So that's the water being split apart and all the plus hydrogen atoms are being pulled onto this negative plate and they're very, very, very tiny little bubbles because hydrogen is the lightest element. And on this plate here, if I give this one a little shake, you see a lot of bubbles on this one too and those are bubbles of oxygen on the plus plate. Now that wasn't producing an awful lot of gas so what I've produced here is um, a little cell of my own out of some bolts. So I'll drop him in there and see what he does. Yeah there you see that's producing quite a nice lot more gas in there. 
hydrogen and oxygen gas bubbling out of the water. Okay. What I'm going to try and do is capture some of that gas and we'll see what it does. So what I've done is I've put that coil up inside this tin can in this bigger bowl of water and what it's now going to do is bubble away and the can was full of water as well so all the gas will rise up inside this tin can and should be collected. So it's going to take quite a while because it doesn't produce an awful lot of gas but I'm just going to leave that and see how much we can capture. So while that's happening, let's just explain what's going on. This is called electrolysis, splitting up the water into hydrogen and oxygen. And we're filling up that can now with a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. Two lots of hydrogen to one lot of oxygen. And you might say, well, if the hydrogen and oxygen likes to be together so much, why don't they combine again to form water? And they would do if you give them a little bit of energy. This is a very unstable combination of gases. So I'm being very careful, but don't do this bit at home because I'm filling up that can with quite explosive gas. And I just need to give it a little bit of energy and those two gases will react again to make water. And this is not an endothermic reaction that needs a lot of energy. This is an exothermic reaction that will produce a lot of energy and that energy will happen in the form of sound as a loud bang and maybe a flash as well of light those are all energy given off by those hydrogen and oxygen saying woohoo let's get back together bang and they're going to make water again so let's wait and see what happens okay so what i've got here is the can which should be full of a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. I don't know how much I managed to capture, so we'll see. It might just be a pop rather than a big bang that happens here. Um, and I've got a little lighter here just to provide a little bit of energy that we'll need to trigger it and set it off. And I've got a camera looking up, so um, safety first. Uh, I'm going to put some goggles on, and also I'm going to put cover my ears because in German this mixture of hydrogen and oxygen is called bang gas for a good reason. So uh, let's see what happens when we ignite it, okay? Whoa! <laughs> so there was a bit of a bang there, wasn't there? Just a little one. It didn't, uh, it didn't shoot the can off. So I don't think we had an awful lot of gas in there, but you heard it go bang. And that was the hydrogen and the oxygen combining again to make water. And ooh, and actually the can feels quite warm as well. So uh, we actually managed to get quite a bit of a reaction there and um, made the thing go with a bit of a bang. Let's have a look and see what this camera saw from inside the can as well. Oh. <laughs> So if we slow that right down, watch as we ignite the gas in there. Look at that flame created and actual water that came out of the can. I think that was some of the water that was created by the explosion. Let's just see that again. Boom. That's good, isn't it? So that's the hydrogen and the oxygen reacting to make water again. Isn't science cool? It's crazy grandfad quiz time. Question one. What two elements make up water? <laughs> hydrogen and oxygen. Two lots of hydrogen to one lot of oxygen. Question two. What is electrolysis? <laughs> That's using electricity to split up the water into its two gases. Question three. Why shouldn't you do this at home? Because the hydrogen and oxygen gas is very explosive. I don't want you to blow up your house. How did you do? Again, don't worry if you didn't get them all right. It's just for fun. 
So that's the end of our look at the physics and chemistry of water on Crazy Grandfad Science. Hope you learned something. Come back next time and we'll do something new. Bye.